All right, what's up, people? Um, first time on video. This is Trish God Media. Trish God is me, and I wanted to talk about USA men's and women's team. So the women played yesterday, July. What was that? 29th. And I'm looking at my computer, and they play Japan now. I watched the game. Well, I watched the replay. I ain't gonna lie to you. But the tallest person on Japan was 6'1". Let's be honest. We knew good and damn well they wasn't going to win. Not against the U.S. They might beat other people the way they play. They damn sure wasn't beating the women's. Minus Brittany Griner, the next tallest person was, I want to say, Aja Wilson. And she's like 6'5". Come on, man. Like... It, was there any was there any doubt that they was going to win <laughs> team USA like let's be honest especially the women like come on man it it looked like <laughs> come on man it looked like an NBA team against a high school team like it it didn't look like any competition it looked like that one picture with a team where USA played Puerto Rico and they was waiting in the tunnel the the size difference like come on man like no <laughs> get the hell out of here no that was the easiest win they probably, come on, man. They was laughing and giggling and shit. Like, <laughs> bro, it looked like, it looked like that iconic picture of Muzzy Bogues, uh, guarding Jordan when he had that, when he had the ball all the way out here, like, and Muzzy trying to reach for it, but he too shit, he too, he too damn short. Come on, man. No, like, stop it. That, that game was a cakewalk. Japan shot a lot of threes because they didn't have a choice. Uh, simply because they too damn short. <laughs> and, you know, going into the paint and actually trying to score was just not going to happen. So, let me move that back just a little bit. So, it, it was just, it wasn't going to happen. Um, it was a cakewalk, man. Let's just be honest. <laughs> Let's just be freaking honest. Uh... So, the score was the women, 102, Japan, uh, 76. Obviously, Aja Wilson, she had a hell of a day. 24 points, 10, uh, 16 from the field, 4 for 6 from the free throw line. Man, not going to lie, she, she freaking dominated from the beginning. But she had 8 points in like, what, 2 minutes? Just Laying the, laying the ball up because she's just taller than everybody. Like, what what the frick are they going to do? <laughs> Transition. Yeah, there you go. Thanks. Appreciate it. And they called timeout. They called plenty of timeouts. Uh, the leading scorer on Japan, uh, the center, uh, Takada. I don't know her first name. I mean, she had 24, 10 out of 11. Uh, she shot a lot of threes, too. So, but, I mean, for the most part, I mean, they were wide open. They they literally shot more threes than twos, and they made more threes than twos. So it wasn't like it wasn't like they could score a bunch of twos. They couldn't. They couldn't score inside the paint or inside the three point line. That was just not gonna happen. Especially when Brittany Griner came in. Yo, they they literally just ran away from her and just shot threes. They had to shoot. They shot like what the FIBA line is what 22 and a half they were shooting about 25 feet away like they had to take long threes because the usa team is just so much taller but that's to be expected i mean yo shortest person was like five feet the team usa shortest the women's shortest person is what kelsey Plum. she's what 510 like come on man <laughs> like are we kidding look japan shot 37.8 percent from the field they shot thirty eight and a half percent from three. Most of their damn points was from three. Come on, man. Both teams had twelve turnovers. Japan had twenty seven rebounds. USA had fifty six. Like, come on, man. Between Asia Wilson and Brittany Griner, like, who do you really think that y'all gonna get? Come on. Anyway, the only issue is, uh, you know, the women's. 
they shot 20% from the three. But to be fair, they didn't have to. They didn't have to shoot threes, especially when you got such a size advantage. I mean, Brianna Stewart is like 6'4". Sabrina's 6'4". Uh, you know, Diana Taurasi, old self. I mean, shout out to her because she, she looks a legend. I mean, she's like 6'1". Uh, like I said, Kelsey Plum's like 5'10". She's literally like the shortest person on the team. Freaking, uh, everybody else is six feet and up, basically. I mean, y'all literally can't guard them. I wish, the only thing about Team USA, I wish they would post up more. Uh, just because they have their props to, probably throughout the whole tournament, they're going to have a size advantage in almost every position except maybe point guard. So, I wish they would just post up more and just work out of that. But, I mean, if they get them, they only had 12 turnovers both teams so it's not like they really got them out it's not really like they got a lot of turnovers and things like that japan had to take long shots so they missed so they got the rebound they were just pushing it which is perfectly fine same thing i would have did if it's i mean if you gotta if you're six five in the paint the tallest person that has to guard you is basically six foot i mean i'm gonna dump it into the paint the whole game myself why would i why wouldn't i that'd be that'd be retarded so you know Team USA shot uh, 54%, 54.5% from uh, the field. I mean, it was pretty much a cakewalk for them. Um, looking at the box score, Brianna Stewart, 22 points, 11 from 15 from the field. Uh, and like I said, Asia Wilson, 10 for 16. Uh, Brittany Griner had 11, 5 for 7. Sabrina, 4 for 8, 11 points. She was the only one that, Brianna, uh, Sabrina was the only one, I mean, she shot three for seven for three. Kelsey Plum went one for three. Everybody else missed, so, I mean, they, they shot four for 20 from three. Like, they, they shot horrible from three. I'm surprised they even took that many, to be fair. Uh, but you got to give up something. So in that in that scenario, they were playing the three more. They didn't want them. They they really wanted them to shoot threes. They didn't want them in the paint. So you know they're gonna go to a zone and all that stuff. Like that's the thing about the women's game. Like you're gonna see more zone than anything. So you're gonna see a bunch of two three one two one and or one two two one or whatever the case. Like you're gonna see a whole bunch of other kinds of things, formations, stuff like that. So to, to try to slow down uh, Team USA because, you know, they're going to get out and run and they're going to leak out really fast. Um, what's her name? Chelsea Gray. You know, she she can, she uh, controlled the tempo. She only had two points. Uh, she shot the ball five times, but she had 13 assists. So she led the team in assists. The next person was Brianna Stewart, who had, I'm sorry, not Brianna Stewart, Asia Wilson. No, Sabrina. But that was more so transition. Sabrina had five. That was just more, everything else was just transition assists and stuff like that. I mean, they had 35 assists in the game. Jesus. That alone says a lot. So, I mean, that was a cakewalk, honestly. Um, nobody's surprised that they won. Japan made it interesting just in the sake of how many threes that they just trying to make it somewhat of a game and you still got beat by almost 30, but you know, hey, <laughs> more power to you, right? So let's see, who did they play? Oh, So the next time they play is Thursday. They play Belgium. I don't know anything about Belgium. They're probably bigger as far as height is concerned. So it should be interesting. I still expect them to win. Maybe not by 30, but, uh, you know, 15, 20. You know, the women's team is just still leaps and bounds better than pretty much the rest of the world. Uh, so it's not like there's a bunch of 
WNBA players that's from overseas in the women's game like there is in the men. So, yeah, I, I'm expecting them to just blow out everybody in their, um, in their group. The men played on Sunday, um, July 28th. They played Serbia first game. Uh, they, they blew them out in the end. They beat them 110 to 84. To be honest, the first half was actually really close. Um, I think they was only up 10 at the first half. Um, and that was just turnovers. I mean, USA had 17. You know, anybody can stay in the game. Kevin Durant went, what, 100%? He went, what, uh, like 8 for 8? Team USA has always just been the quickest built team. So it's not like. It's not like they got months and months of practice. Like, they literally get out of the finals and it's like, okay, who wants to join? <laughs> I mean, that's basically it. Like, who wants to join? Like, they have training camps to see, like, how they're going to cut it down and things like that. But other than that, like, they're learning how to play together within a month, basically. Then they have a few games, exhibition games or whatever, to kind of get into some rhythm and whatnot. But it's not like they've been playing with each other for years because they literally don't. So... Because some people don't want to play, some people do. So it's not like it's not like they got all this chemistry. They're just really good players. They just have to figure it out. And that's what makes them so much different than the rest of the world. Um, USA shot 62.3% from the field, 56.3% from three. Uh, they had 39 rebounds, but like I said, it was just mostly the turnovers that really hurt them in the first half. Uh, made the game close still. But after that, to be honest, once they took out Joel and B and put in Bam and Anthony Davis, like the game was just a blowout at that point. Because and B, you know, you gotta slow the game for him and things like that. For some reason he's not a good passer out of the post. I don't know why at this point. He didn't play in the game long enough to know just you can't do your move every time. Uh Serbians had three players in the NBA, but the only one that mattered was Jokic, let's just be honest, because he's the best player. Joel Embiid, he played 11 minutes. He had four points, so yeah. He only played the first quarter, really, and that was it. He played maybe a little bit, maybe a minute or two in the second, but that was it. I mean, he had four points and three fouls. Like, God damn, like, come on, man. 11 minutes, four points, three fouls. Like, I'll take you out, too. You're not helping us at this point. And every other team, their big is going to run down the court. Like, you're not running down the court. You're going to jog and all that stuff. Granted, this is his first Olympics or whatnot. So, who knows? Like, he might he might be better next game against South Sudan. Um, they play on Wednesday. So, we'll see. I don't know what Steve Kerr is going to do. July 23rd or 31st, you know, Wednesday. Um, LeBron had 21. KD finished with 23. 8 for 9 from the field. So, yeah. KD coming in the game pretty much changed all that. Once he came in the game, he had a, a quick 3 right off the bat. And you know KD's always been efficient, so that's always his thing. He didn't really have to do too much. He was just coasting low key. Um, LeBron almost had a triple double. Uh, and crazy enough, you know, Jason Tatum and Tyrese Halliburton didn't even play. So, I mean, either one of them would have played. Who knows what would have happened? Regardless, I think Jason Tatum should have played over Derek White. I'm just gonna be honest because. Jason Tatum can do everything that Dwight, I mean, that Derek White can do, but better because he's taller and faster and stronger. So I need Steve Kerr, to, Steve Kerr to put Jason Tatum in the game instead of Derek White respectfully, you know, and give him. Derek White played 16 minutes, but Jason Tatum couldn't get in the game? Like, what are we talking about here? You playing Derek White over Jason Tatum? Seriously? Derek White has gotten so much better. He is a good player. 
I can't take that away from him. But it's Jason Tatum. We're not even going to talk about Jalen Brown not even making it. But it's Jason Tatum. Let's be for real here. So, yeah, I need Steve Kerr to do better. Uh, We're just going to keep it a buck. Curry played 21 minutes, 11 points. Drew Holiday did his thing on the defensive end. 24 minutes, 15 points. Devin Booker, 26 minutes, a smooth 12. And you know what happened to him, dude. Um, because they don't play together, it's going to be really hard to find good rotations for everybody. We'll see what happens going forward with, like I said, MB compared to Anthony Davis and Bam just because they move so much better than MB and they don't have to slow the game down in the post and everything like that, like MB does, unfortunately. And to be fair, MB is, he clogged the lane. He can shoot, but he's not the best shooter. They can't play five out with him for the most part, honestly. So, and there's no defensive three, so somebody can always be in the paint, no matter what. So, with Anthony Davis and Bam, I mean, all of them can shoot the mid-range, but Joel Embiid just likes to be on the block, which, to be fair, I mean, he's like 7'1", 260, 280, so it's not like he's not a, he can't be a force down there, but he's a black hole. He turns the ball over more than James Harden and Russell Westbrook in the post, which is, again, ridiculous. But this is just his game. So, whatever. Um, overall, I mean, that was probably one game people were a little nervous about. But we blew them out. So, whatever. Next. Uh, like I said, South Sudan might be – it'll be hard. They didn't have KD the first time. So, it might change some things. Um, and we'll just see how that rematch goes, to be honest. Like, I'm not nervous for that game. But – I am interested to see how they play them just because this will probably be their toughest match, honestly. Like, I don't know. South Sudan is just, it's an unknown. So we know that they're athletic as hell and they have length. So, I mean, it can, anything can happen at that point. But again, they didn't have KD the first time. So, that could change some things. Uh, I mean, the USA doesn't have a strong group, to be fair. I mean, they they have Puerto Rico, Serbia, and South Sudan. I mean, <laughs> come on. Uh, Serbia and South Sudan are what were their hardest matchups. I mean, Puerto Rico, like, eh, I'm expecting. All right, my bad. I had a notification. My bad. But, yeah, uh, Serbia and South Sudan, basically the hardest matchups that they have. And then it's the games. Uh, and then it's the medal games. Um, Spain is always going to be tough. Canada is probably, Spain and Canada are probably their hardest matchups, to be completely honest. Um, then maybe France, but. Canada and Spain are going to be the biggest issues in this whole Olympics, to be fair, because they got the most NBA players. And they got – Canada has the most NBA players, and Spain is always just – they're just the best team, like, chemistry-wise and everything else. So we'll see how that goes. Um, team USA plays tomorrow at 11.30 against South Sudan, and then the girls or the women's play Thursday – I think probably the same time. So we'll see. Um, I will be live on Friday to watch the game, the men's game against Puerto Rico. And oh, well, yeah, I'll be live. And I should be live probably Thursday too um, to watch the women's play. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter who they play. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Oh, uh, Belgium. Yeah, yeah. They're probably going to blow them out, so it doesn't matter. But I'll still watch it and do my commentary again uh, at that point. I, all right. I can't stream the game. Sorry. I can't stream the game. I, I can't show the video of it because it's going to get flagged in my YouTube channel and everything. 
but I will have it playing, so you'll hear it, and you'll hear me, you know, doing the commentary on my phone and everything else. Uh, I'll be watching it on my TV. Um, other than that, you know, all right, guys. Uh, appreciate y'all watching. Um, still got high school games and all that stuff getting uh, shown every day. Um, season starts, like, first week of November, things like that. I am personally training someone uh, on the girls' team, you know, just to help them get better and things like that. And just, you know, just want to see them better and improve and be, like, that transformation to be a mm, learning the game to be a good player. But all right, guys. Until next time, peace.